Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how an instrument changes with time, how an instrument changes for a player and playing in an instrument. So I got an email from Marie, she's an adult learner, she's in her mid-50s, and uh, she asked me this. I just saw your video on why solos never lends out their instrument. In the video, I was talking about how playing your violin affects the sound of the instrument. I'm a beginner, age 54. I'm playing a German factory violin that's pre-World War II. I was wondering, as I'm growing with the instrument and as I learn, will the sound change as I grow? Thanks for your advice. Definitely. There's going to be a few levels to this. So the sound of your instrument does change and the way you play it will affect the sound. But then there's also as you are growing, you will learn to get more out of the instrument and, and you will learn more about how to really optimize the sound. And it's a lot of it's in the bowing. And how you bow the instrument, you can get a much bigger sound out of an instrument and a much more beautiful sound. So as you're playing and as you're drawing the bow over the string, you're basically causing the instrument to vibrate a certain way. And depending on how you're playing and how the instrument vibrates over and over again, the instrument will kind of settle in into your way of making it work. Currently you're a learner, so because you're a learner, your tone is, you know, you're still working on your tone, you're still improving your, your sound. A really good example is what it's like to be a learner. Just have a look at my video of me trying to play left-handed violin and the sound is horrendous, like it's so bad. But as, you, as you're growing and learning, you know, your sound is going to improve. So there's that, there's the, the bit that you will get better and as you get better, you will make an instrument sound better. Now I've had a soloist, like a famous international soloist in here and he played some of my instruments and there was one particular instrument that a lot of people find really difficult to play and it doesn't you know it doesn't speak easily it doesn't ring as easily but he made it sound fantastic and he just knew how to make the instrument work nice but there's also the inherent sound of an instrument like when an instrument is made what i always try to do with my instruments is i tune the top plate to the back and to the volume so they all work in harmony and that means that the instrument actually speaks a lot easier because it's already kind of working in harmony. An instrument changes depending on how you play it. So it kind of gets used to your style of playing. And so if you have a very tight playing style, the instrument will shut down and it'll sound tense and it'll sound a bit harsh. I had a musician, she had me do some work on uh, her violin. She was... Uh, actually quite a high-ranking orchestra player but she hadn't been happy with her sound and uh, so I did a lot of work and got a lot of improvement out of the instrument but when she picked up the instrument she picked it up and she went like this <laughs> And uh, the look on her face already gave it away. She was expecting the instrument not to sound nice. And she made the instrument sound not so nice. So there's the, the part where an instrument gets played in and gets freed up through playing or it adjusts itself to your playing style. And then is there is the actual emotion that you're feeling while you're playing. So if you have a feeling of hopelessness or a feeling of shyness... Uh, I had a client in the other day, a cellist, and he was just a bit on the shy side. So when he tried a cello, he played it very quietly. And so the cello wasn't able to ring freely because he didn't feel confident to to play with gusto and, and bravado. So that will also, if you keep playing an instrument like that, after a while, that'll affect the tone of the instrument because not all of the instrument is being utilized. But a big thing is you and your instrument learning to work in harmony. 
And as you're playing more with your instrument, try and play it in a way that allows the instrument to sound as freely as possible. So don't put too heavy of a bow. You know, you, you want to... You, you, you get it going, but then you... You allow the instrument to speak freely so you don't want to put too much pressure on it when you're putting too much pressure on it it squeezes the sound a little bit it's not as it's not as light uh, I mean it might be a technique that you'll use to create a certain sound an instrument will adjust itself to the player now will your instrument your particular instrument improve it kind of depends so I'm quite fussy about getting an optimal setup on an instrument and for me the optimal setup is that relationship between the neck angle so when the neck angle is right you have the correct bridge height and when the bridge height is correct, you have the correct pressure of the strings onto the top plate. And then I adjust the sound post to work freely with the instrument. So I make a bridge that works, you know, that allows as much of the vibration to get onto the top plate as possible in most cases. There's a few cases where I'm actually trying to mute it a tiny bit because there's too much coming down, but mostly I try and get as much of the the volume of the vibration onto the top plate as possible and then I will adjust the sound pose so the instrument works together in harmony the top and the back work together in harmony and the sound gets shot out and um, the instrument really carries that's something I can do but there's that inherent sound that an instrument has which is what I was talking about before so if a maker creates a harmonious relationship between the plates you'll get a very good sounding instrument but if uh, there are a lot of makers that don't necessarily do that uh, each piece of timber really needs to be treated differently because each piece of timber has a different density so if a timber is denser you actually have to make the plates thinner to accommodate that and so through the tap tuning you can always get it right but there's not every maker does that a lot of makers make beautiful looking instruments but don't necessarily know how to get all the parts working together in harmony. So the instrument you have, I took a look at the photos. It looks like a Bohemian violin from possibly the early 1900s. So Bohemia became Czechoslovakia after the First World War 1919. So my guess is that it was probably before that period, but only just before that period. And the instruments were mass produced, so they didn't really care about the sound so you have to make sure that your instrument gets optimized by a violin maker so that you get the best possible sound out of the instrument and then as you get better you'll create a nicer sound and the instrument will play itself into your sound it's not always the instrument that needs to play better sometimes it's actually the player needing to learn to get a really nice sound from their bowing and uh, the, the way I was trained bowing was to really just focus on bowing so I would always do a session before you start where you just focus on the bow and get the instrument sounding as free as possible one of the things that I had to do to, to learn bow control was to play two strings at the same time so totally evenly but you try and get it as even as possible and the reason for the break in between the little break so uh, so there's two beats to you playing and then two pe two beats break and the reason the two beats of break are there really are for you to take the time to reset readjust your hand make sure that it's nice and relaxed but you really try and get it get as big a sound out of it as possible so if you just do a one minute session before you start actually playing anything else just to focus on the tone you're creating with your bow i wouldn't do any fingering at all just play open strings or if you want to do fingering just do one finger 
so you don't have to focus on doing two different things. Yeah, so try and make the instrument play as freely as possible without squeezing the sound and just practice that. So Marie was talking about getting that love of music when she heard her auntie playing hymns when she was a child. She played hymns on the piano so it was just a wonderful way to wake up. And then Marie wanted to play violin at, at age 11 and she actually got her granddad's violin to play. And uh, when she went to the teacher, the teacher told her she was too old. There had actually been a discussion with the parents before that because his prices were too expensive. So she always thought she was too old to learn. But luckily she got the violin out again and is, is really getting into it now and learning lots. Uh, she's watching a lot of YouTube videos and learning a lot. Marie, I would recommend taking the violin to a violin maker just to get it checked over and really optimised. Try and find someone good. But also really keep at it and have fun. And maybe do actually look up a teacher and get a few lessons. Because sometimes there's just little things you can do to, to correct yourself that will really make you leap forward. So so you might not need regular lessons, but you might just, if, if you can get a lesson every now and then. Yeah, it doesn't matter what music you play. You just love the music that you play. That's really important. Anyway, when you get a new violin and it's never been played before, it takes a little while to be played in because the, the timber has never vibrated before. So it'll start vibrating and it'll vibrate a certain way and it'll get used to those kinds of vibration and that's playing in. So after a while, it actually plays more freely. But it's also important that everything is right on the instrument and that the instrument is played correctly. An instrument will change sound depending on who plays it and it will play itself in for each player. Uh, so those are the most important things to know. You won't be able to significantly change the character of an instrument with your playing, but you will be able to imbue your expression into the instrument, you know, it becomes yours, it becomes, I mean, the instrument is really just an extension of yourself. So it's good to find an instrument that already has a beautiful sound, and then you just go with that. Anyway, the instrument I've been playing on here is my Georg Hofmeister violin. I really like it. It's 4,200 Australian dollars. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that helps. I just thought I'd do a whole video about this question and uh, if you guys have any more questions, ask them. I'll try and answer them. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Remember to subscribe and hit the little bell. That way you find out when I post my next video. Watch some of my other videos where I explain different aspects of instrument making and how instruments work. Keep making beautiful music and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.